let's take a look at this case. This is another uh, piece of skeletal muscle. I think you'll realize that uh, instantly even though it's not normal by virtue of the fact that you see fibers that have clear striations and nuclei uh, arranged at the periphery. Uh, these fibers are a lot thinner than normal if you remember from the previous uh, normal set. In addition, there is some fat between the fibers. This is once again a denervation uh, type of atrophy. Why might it be like this? Well, let's take a look at the spinal cord. Notice in the upper right here, this is a spinal cord. This cleft represents the anterior or ventral portion of the spinal cord. And so the gray matter is generally oriented along here and along here. And these would be the uh, regions of the anterior horn cells. So take a very close look at this area here and we'll blow it up. Well, you can see that there are some inflammatory changes. Uh, they are chiefly perivascular, but they also involve the uh, gray matter of the spinal cord itself. There's an inflammatory process going on here. And although uh, chiefly uh, you can see a reaction of glial cells as part of this inflammatory process, please note that there are occasional neurons, like here and here, which are being involved also. These uh, anterior horn cells, uh, the motor neuron cells controlling the muscle we just saw, are being destroyed. They are being destroyed by an inflammatory process. The chief and most common inflammatory process involving uh, motor neurons of the anterior or ventral horns is the polio virus. This is poliomyelitis of the anterior horn of the spinal cord, which is causing a, a secondary denervation type of atrophy in the corresponding skeletal muscles in which you see thinning of the fibers and some deposition of fat. Thank you very much.